The moment is now. Are you ready? Ready to own the land, Evans? Hello. Welcome to Let's Play Armis. Today I'm going to try to focus on the um, the seas, the Greater Sea, as well as the Eastern Sea. Specifically, travel from one to the other using the submarine um, and also boarding, onboarding, um, going from ship to ship um, and, and, and even getting into uh, coastal waters uh, with the help of the uh, mover. Let's get started. We have the setup zone, which is highlighted here. We have the flag already in the corner. Um, now we have the reserve that we place either next to or in front of the flag. And the mover, which has to be one or two spaces away from coastal waters. I'll put it here. I'll put the submarine here, Coast Guard here, and aircraft carrier there. Hopefully, the after I set up and the computer does the identical setup on the other side, hopefully the computer doesn't choose to switch board positions. If it does, then uh, I won't have the advantage that I'm looking to have by putting uh, my submarine this close to the eastern seas. In any event, let's move on. I'm going to try to load up this side with uh, some not so aggressive pieces in hopes that the computer balances out the forces and sees it as a neutral setup and keeps it uh, just the way it is in terms of green on this side and red on that side. Okay, I do, I think this is a hole. Let's see if the computer sees it as a hole. It might not be, but let's see what happens. Yeah, it does see it as a hole. I think that might also be a hole, but that might not be as well. Let's see what happens. And it does say, does say that it is, and I know that's not a hole. Alright, great. The computer accepts your setup. Click here to start. Fantastic. So now, the computer, since it accepted my setup, it gets to move first. It's moving with its, or should I say, it's leading with its um, jet which is right here. I'm going to lead with my aircraft carrier. This gets me close to both sides. Well, that scared me for a moment. I thought it was going to immediately take out my submarine, which is not the case. In any event, so now with the mover already out, I can now move the sub into coastal waters close to the eastern sea. Okay, with the with his marine here, he is now threatening both my aircraft carrier as well as my sub. I can move the sub in and that'll be protecting 
but it won't protect the aircraft carrier. The Marine, my Marine here, is providing coverage for the aircraft carrier, but I don't know what um, the computer wants to do. It may want to trade my aircraft carrier for his Marine, which would be a poor trade, but, uh, and, and it would kind of hurt the examples that I'm trying to, to give for sea passage. But uh, I'll give it a shot and give it a, and see what happens. Great, that's great. Uh, all right, so now I have both vessels, both deep sea vessels in deep sea waters. So now they both have power to uh, basically take whatever ha whatever comes into the deep seas. Now, if I take my aircraft carrier and go here, he's able to take his aircraft carrier and go directly into deep sea and take my aircraft carrier out. If I take my aircraft carrier and go here, he can do the same move by going into or entering deep seas and he'd be empowered to take my aircraft carrier on that side. So I could, if I want to move this aircraft carrier, the only place I can move it is either here or back out onto uh, coastal waters. If I back him out onto coastal waters, he has no power while he's on coastal waters. So I, I might decide to hold him here or move it here. I don't want to move it over here because I want to move my submarine in this path. This space right here is called the Polder Valley, which uh, underneath it connects the two deep sea bodies of water. So you have the uh, greater body or the great seas connected to the eastern seas under the Polder Valley. This space as I said, is, is uh, connecting the two deep sea uh, bodies of water. On top, it's coastal waters. So essentially, if I can go here and be out of deep waters, or I can go here and be in uh, deep waters as well. I'm going to take this option to go here for now. And I got to be aware of his um, air force between the helicopter and the jet, they can f do flyovers and directly between takeoff and landing, that will be the space that would be taken out. So in this case, the helicopter can go two or four spaces, also called four or less even spaces. And the jet can go four or more even spaces um, so it can go four six or eight spaces and again whatever is between takeoff and landing that's what comes out uh, all right so now I want to get something to board so I'm gonna move Where is my other... Alright, I'll move this here since my president is covering uh, for this Marine. I gotta be extra careful. Alright, this is a good move. With... Alright, one... Alright, if I go here with my sub, if I go here with my sub in the Eastern Sea, he can use his helicopter to fly from here to here, which is four spaces, one, two, three, four, and end up taking out my submarine. So I can't go here first, or should I say I shouldn't go here first, unless I block up the area so that he would not be able to land. If he can't land, then he can't do the move. So I'm just gonna take my mover and go here.
All right, now, again, I got to you know, beware of the fact that you can go in here and take whatever goes in this space. So I, I got to watch out for that. For right now, I'm just going to put the mover here so that I can get my Coast Guard in coastal waters and show you how I can board with different pieces and move uh, move them around. Oh, I gotta push him into coastal waters. All right, so now that he's in coastal waters, because it is the Coast Guard, he is empowered and has the ability to take other pieces on coastal waters, including these Marines, but it just can't reach out that far. It, it can only go one or two spaces. So you see it there. The Coast Guard can't board other sea vessels, nor can other sea vessels board the Coast Guard. But now, as you can see, my media can board the Coast Guard, and since it's still in a straight direction, it can also board the aircraft carrier and end up on the aircraft carrier. And if it was boarding there, then it can move over onto this side, and so on and so forth. Okay, if I take the, yeah, that's okay. If I take the army and go here, I am threatening his jet as well as his president. And I wouldn't take his jet first because then he can use his president to take me. So I take his president first and then, uh, and then that would be that. Since he moved away, I can still take this because now the president is not threatening and he's out of range of the, uh, the Marines. Now what I want to do, since he moved this over here, I can now move my submarine over here. Um, the distance from here anywhere in that direction is too far. You can only go four or less in even numbers. Uh, if I move my... Okay. If I move my Marine over here, I think it can go there. Yes, it can. If I move my Marine over here, my Army will be providing coverage for it as well as my Marine would be providing coverage for my army but having uh, a range of three spaces it can go one two and three so it would also threaten his president and one two three be out of range of both of his uh, Marines and then at the same time it will provide some additional coverage when I want to use my Coast Guard to go from here to here to threaten his um, powerless uh, aircraft carrier. So I'm going to take that move and hope I didn't miss something. Okay, so now I can take his president with my Marine, but then he can take my Marine with his Marine or with his vice president. So I don't want to do that. All right, I'm going to go, I wanted to go here, but if I go here, then this Marine can go one, two, and three, so I can take it. I'll just go here to maintain the threat on the aircraft carrier um, in range of one Marine. Let's see if I can. Oh, this mover is getting a whole lot of work. I'm going to use the mover to move the jet onto a new trajectory or flight path. So I can move it one, two, three, four onto the aircraft carrier. Wow, he moved his flag.
helicopter is out of range. If I move from here to here, whatever is directly in between, that's what would come out. Since there's nothing there, there should be no loss. Where is his... Okay, his jet is, is uh, sidelined, so I don't have to worry about that. The computer really loves using their Air Force. So I, I want to look out for that as much as I could. Now before I do a whole lot of travel in here, I do want to take out my, um, or his, uh, aircraft carrier. Alright, let me just show you this move before I lose my Air, uh, Coast Guard. I want to be able to use the Coast Guard to go from coastal waters to deep waters with other items. So now this Marine can go three spaces. One, two, three. One, two, three. You can go here. Now what I'm going to do, it would not be able to go here because it's out of range. One, two, three. But, uh, that's not a good example. Let me give a better example of what could be done with, with this. Okay. Alright, I'll keep the coverage on there. I want to use or set up to have my president go here and then use the submarine as a bridge to going on to the other side. Normally, the president would not be able to walk on water, so it would have to basically uh, allow the submarine to be used as a bridge so that it can go from land to land just by boarding and unboarding. Uh, I didn't see the movement that it did, but hopefully it didn't do anything that would hurt me quickly. Now his Marine has got coverage on his um, army but I'm going to do it anyway because I, I think I've already shown how you can have travel here in all of these spaces. So I'm going to, I can take him or I can just land here. So I'm going to land here for right now and try to see if I can go in this direction. But before I go over here with it, I have to take him out and I want to use, get as much coverage as possible because there's going to be a lot of carnage. All right, now he's got his Coast Guard here. All right, one, one, two, three, four. Okay, one of the rules of the game is that this piece, which is his reserve, can't move until all of his military has made an initial move. Now, this is his submarine. I don't know if it made an initial move or not. But even if I did make this move over here to take out his Coast Guard, his Vice President, which can go up to four spaces in a straight line, can go one, two, three to take him out. So even though his reserve might not be able to move, his Vice President can make the move to take that out and at that point then I can take this and then this can take that and it can take this it's gonna get a little bloody in a little while it looks like all right let's start uh, the bloodbath
Now, if I don't take his Marine, then he will take my Marine. So, that's something that I really have to do, even though I know he's going to take me back over there with his Marine, because it's out of range from this Marine. But then I can take his army with my president. And then he'll take my army with his marine. His nuke is within range of his flag so he won't be able to detonate it. His helicopter can only go four or less. One, two, three, four. And it has to do a flyover, so that would have to be the landing point. So that would be a good move to make in terms of getting close to his flag. And then also putting a threat on his helicopter. Now since his flag is not next to his reserve, then his reserve will not be able to offer any assistance. Normally if the flag, or should I say normally the flag is next to the reserve. If the flag is not next to the reserve, then all I have to do is take the flag and that will be the end of the game. But if the flag was next to the reserve, then the reserve would be sacrificed on behalf of the flag so that there's at least a little bit of a buffer. Since they're not next to each other, then the game should be over right now. Okay, and that was it for today. Thanks for watching.